Yeah, yeah this podcast is on, JJ. Homeboy. I'll see you, baby. Yeah, we uh, we over here with the uh, with the famous Raymonds, man, Raymond Avenue. You know what I'm saying? West Side of LA. You know what I'm saying? We got OG Snoop right here. All you know day. what I'm saying? <laughs> huh? What that Raymond like, baby? All day, every day. Oh yeah, we was waiting for Skull to pull up. He pulling up any minute. Sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, you know Raymond is 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 you know one of my favorites. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of love for the Raymonds. Yes, you know I love Rips everywhere, but they got a like you know. Hey, yeah, it, man, but Raymond got a, you know, I've been fucking with them a long time. You know what I'm saying? That's my boy, my boy, Big Skull. Yes, sir. You know sir. what I'm saying? Another yes, one of Raymond's famous. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Yes, R-A-C. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I remember when I was fucking around with your boy, when we was fucking around in T.S. <laughs> motherfucker uh, talking about them with your boy, Pick. <laughs> fucking with them motherfucking R.C. Colas, yeah, R.A.C. Yeah, Colas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that Raymond Avenue. <laughs> that's that Raymond Avenue drink right there. Uh-huh. That nigga G was a beast too. I said, man, damn, that nigga didn't feel nothing. Oh yeah, you know we, hey shit. homie, we was young and, and didn't man. get back, homie. It's he hard can, to find hey, homie, hard He to can't find never it. be another era like it's ours, homie. It, man. You know what I'm saying? It. it can't never be another era like ours. But you know, uh-huh. once if we if we if we really sub out the haters and shit, this should be fine. Yeah, because there's a lot of hating going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, from, you from know, everywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a motherfucking doubt. But you know what I'm saying our era, homie, was so motherfucking vicious. We was tight everywhere, county jail, uh, YA, yeah. juvenile hall. We was just tight. I mean, you know, I don't know what happened to that shit. These motherfuckers here. Oh man. They ain't scared to kill, but they kill the wrong people. <laughs> Jersey, Jersey in the building. What's up, Jersey? I see you. Uh huh. Yeah, look at that motherfucker. I'm gonna buy you. Diamond, what's up, Diamond? I see you too, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. Uh, do we got any? We got any females in the house tonight? We got any women up in this joint? Where they at? Where they at? Uh, where y'all at? I need to I need to hear y'all if you say something too. Say hi or something. Uh, Ronald, what's up, baby? How you doing? Yeah. Listen, nigga. My is. boy, my boy OG JJ, where you at, baby? Boy, that's hey, Hub City Kitty, I see you. I see you, Hub City Kitty. Man, I got a picture of J.J. on Swole in my phone. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was just... I went to county of J.J. there. They used to do some high power. Say big with motherfucking uh, Jason Keller. Say big skull looking good. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. I tried, uh, man. See machine in motion, man. Man, can't You know stop, what I'm saying? This, this is how real motherfuckers do it. We just kick it. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got to be up in no studio or none of that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? We just, you know, we can just kick back, you know what I'm saying, and just chill, you know what I'm saying, and enjoy, you know what I'm saying, the company. You know what I'm saying? They don't know, though. We we got some history up in this motherfucking garage right here, man. A lot of years. Vincent, what's up, baby? Colorado, Denver, I see y'all, baby. Yeah, we got some history up in this motherfucker, man. We got... We got a whole lot of years of cripping up in this garage, in this garage with just the three of us right here, man. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Tell them we coming real soon with that kid though. Uh, don't take we ain't don't give them no games, go. Yeah. Motherfucker right. might try to beat us to the punch. Yeah. We got we can't hey, give them I'm no game. <laughs> yeah, you know you got thieves out there that will steal a motherfucker idea, homie. You know what I'm saying? See, yeah, that's what you know about that. We don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Um, Snoop, tell them a little something about yourself, homie. Oh, man. Uh, tell them your journey, Snoop. Huh? Snoop, Snoop got that OG golf cap on now. Yeah, all day. Huh? Yeah. My journey from 83. No nigga got caught up, got locked up. Did 32 years. Well, how, how much time you do, Snoop? 32 years. 32 years? Where were you doing? In the penitentiary? All day in the penitentiary. Yeah, that 32 years is a yeah. long motherfucking time, homie. Ten toes down. Ten toes down. Hey, nigga gay. Nigga uh, stood tall uh, through uh, it all, homie. Yeah. No yeah. smut on the nigga do, name or nothing. Uh, do a background check. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, hey. That's right. Hey, when a motherfucker can do 32 years, homie. With no smut on his name, 
and come out that motherfucker, man, and, and, and man, and still say and keep it G, man, that's hard, on me. Yeah. On some real shit. Yeah. Cause you know, just like I know, I've been there too, homie. I know. And it, it, hey, it be a whole lot of bullshit going you know, on in that motherfucker. Fast, you know. Hey, motherfucker, at what point? They were talking that nigga stupid Ray was going crazy. I wasn't going crazy. I just felt a bad nigga. Like I was the only crip on the yard at some time. Yeah. You know, so I solo bolo. I did my crip and solo bolo for a couple of years. Sometimes you gotta you get know? like that. Sometimes you gotta step back. Yeah, to see what I was up against. Yeah. You know? And I got out here, and I just reconnect, and I'll continue to reconnect with people, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's right. For myself, right. without nobody being in my ear, poisoning me, making me nervous, and shit yeah, like yeah. when I first got out. Yeah. Because I don't know what the, hear, what the truth yeah. is about. Yeah, exactly. Motherfucker been gone yeah. 32 years. He yeah. got he to gotta come out here and do some so homework. I got to expose myself in order to evaluate this shit for myself. I gotta, you know, be out here. Yeah. I told Spark and all that, I said, I'm doing what I said I was gonna do. When I get out, I'm gonna stay ground zero until I make, make this shit right. Yeah. It's part of my sacrifice. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, that's With right. Script, you know? That's what it's been since I've been out. I don't do dumb shit, though. I try to do all the shit that you're supposed to do. Yeah, motherfucker, hey, motherfucker, you know? hey. The going back is not an option. Not even an option, you know. Yeah, yeah. going back to prison is not an option at all. Nah, nah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, babe? Yeah, break up that. Man, that should have break a man. The hey, only I, thing about it, since I've missed out so much enjoyment in life, I try to enjoy my life when I can. I don't try to like let it be all work. Just gotta stay and no play. You gotta have you know, some play in there, yeah. You know what I mean? Gotta stay strong. Yeah. I believe, I believe, I believe, yeah. I believe we're gonna do it. I this would see you people. right now if it was all work. Yeah. yeah. Me and you could be ex. Yeah, yeah. We always miss each other. Yeah, without a doubt. You know? Hell yeah. yeah. That's what it is, man. See, that's why I be trying to let these youngsters know, man, this shit ain't no game, yeah. man. We didn't, we're all us in here, homie. Yeah. We oh, didn't, man, oh. combined, combined all together, we might have a hundred years in prison. Yeah. With, 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 with all three yeah. of us combined, at yeah. least close, oh, yeah. at least close to a hundred. The whole thing about the case, all of us had our journey with each other at one point. Of yeah, that, of exactly, that time. exactly. We all were going through the system right there in the whole of tanks, going through the system with each other. Yeah. Fishing shit. Yeah. To yourself, to, I, I, you know, we did that. All up in that shit. Man, it was. my memory, Gangsta, you know? Yeah. How oh. we first start connecting. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cause shit, look how much, look how much, yeah. how much of our lives was wasted behind yeah. them bars, yes. homie. Yeah. Yeah, a whole lot of our oh. memories is memories from behind the bars. Yeah, a whole lot of them. You know? You know, you know how motherfuckers make memories yeah. out here? Yeah. M memorable memories? Hey, but to get out, first of all, to make it through all that drama, right? And to get out and reconnect. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it let us know that our spears was in the right place when we was fucking with each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, without a doubt. You know? Because you know the, the real recognized, yeah. the real you recognized know, real, homie. We was going through the court line like I host on them games. I right. host on them, them conflicts right. come to the court today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you right. We ain't. Know when get to a yeah, point, yeah, yeah, a certain point, right? Well, yeah, it's on. We, we, we going we we to need each other. You know what I'm saying? And on some hey, real hey, shit. Some real shit. I ain't gonna lie. You know, you motherfuckers know. don't know. You know what I'm saying? Cripping is deep. Crips yeah. always been deep. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But hey, them damus wasn't yeah, no punks. Want no joke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You had a whole man. Them damu. You had. You had a whole lot of damu. Up in the tank on us. You had a whole they lot of that, homie. Great jump too. Oh, we got some crabs. Yeah, you man. Yeah, what do we hear? That all we doing is hey, man. Our Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. That's a melee up yeah, here, yeah, melee like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> you you know, know that's why. That's why you know. They're what I'm saying? My memory. Yeah, yeah. And Hell you know, yeah. I ain't lying. We had the great jumpsuit. They recognized us from there. Yeah, let me see. That's how they they fucked over us in the county jail. Yeah. They had over. every. They had everybody else in the blue in the blue jumpsuits, but they had only Crips in gray jumpsuits. So off the top, 
You know what I'm saying? The enemy know who you are, yeah. but you might if you don't know them, then you don't know who they are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Later on, they start giving the Damus the red. Yeah, so that was, like, was way later. It was too yeah. later. Yeah. With this great, you know, remember this? I'm part of the first hundred that so opened up for them. You remember this? Y'all remember this? We tell that. Your here. homeboy Mondo tell that my crime even sitting on the ride. Hey. They got me on camera trying. Oh. Yeah. Y'all remember yeah. this? We're in 4800, we tell Johnny K, nigga, don't be walking around, we going to visit and shit, keep your fists ready for them die move. Yeah. Nigga came through there and clipped that nigga, bang! Yeah. He's squabbling like a motherfucker, lose our business every time. Them niggas wasn't scared of Crip. Hell no. They yeah. were attacking niggas on sight. We yeah. was like this, they were banging on the I was, boy, we like, God damn, so many of these motherfuckers, man. And then, boy, when we went to court in the yeah, great jump suit, oh, the game, whoa. The that yeah, I'm surprised we yeah. made it. <laughs> Hell yeah. That shit. It was it because, we, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, they knew exactly who we was because we had on them colors, that great yeah. jumpsuit. Yeah. But if you didn't know who them and know where they was from, you would never know who they was yeah. until they say something. So they had the advantage. But ain't it, wasn't it all good to nigga go to court there's some homies going to the same court. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah, gonna yeah. Get yeah. Out. yeah. <laughs> I was just oh, yeah. I remember that, because nigga go to the court yeah. line, right? Yeah. And you be sitting in the tank, and you be like, man, I hope some other yeah. crimps coming here. So you see a great jump suit, nigga have a little relief, like. Hell yeah, you see that other, you see them, uh, you see them other gray jumpsuits, yeah. a motherfucker be happy as a motherfucker. Yeah. Hell Glad yeah. you got a fight I mean, and chance. And then again, and again, again, again because, you know what I'm saying? When we had the great jumpsuits on, we was in handcuffs. Yeah, handcuffs. And everybody else yeah. was free. Hey, remember the kick fights? We kick yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. So we was all on that long chain hey, together. The dates of Brandon Dabu was like this to us, huh? We and yeah, we, we, we on fuck. chains. We chained up and they I, not. Go on the business, try to get a visit. Fuck you, fuck you. Motherfucker trying to spit on a nigga and everything. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm trying to spit over that nigga and say, fuck your mama. I'm all about going through all that shit. Hope coming from court, busted up, lip busted. Cause they got to be. Like, damn, we gonna get something in the morning. This is how we plot. Good enough. They come back from court line, busted up. We say, damn, how they got to Motherfucker, no, homie. Yeah, the shit was so crazy, homie, because like I say, we was at a disadvantage because we had on them great jumpsuits that said we was Crips. And we had on, and they didn't have, we was handcuffed and they wasn't. They kept us handcuffed. So it wasn't nothing for them to just, to rush us while we was handcuffed. Man, they, yeah, we was at a disadvantage like a motherfucker. But when we did get out them cuffs and caught them motherfuckers in them cells, oh yeah, 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 it was cool. Uh, he go, he go to, he go to, he go to general. He go, he go to general himself. You know what I'm saying? Huh? OG, OG, Big Spark, man. Go, on, go on, have a seat, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we was just going through some shit, man. No, man, go, on, go, on, you know what I'm saying? We, are, we all know who it is, man, but uh. You know what I'm saying? This is, you know what I'm saying, the I one and the one and only, you know what I'm saying, hood legend yes, sir. from Raymond Avenue Crips, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. OG Spark, man. Mr. Spark, man. Uh, Mr. Pleasure. Spark. It's a it's a pleasure and an honor, man. But first and foremost, man, I salute Baby Gangster Man for, you know, including us in these series. And uh like this Crippin says, you know what I'm saying, we ask one for one. Right. Yeah. Whatever, and whatever right. is progressive for us is progressive for you. Yeah. If you from this real blue rag. Oh, oh yeah, without a doubt. Which is Raymond yeah. Avenue, hey. West Side Crip Gang. Think, think he is, is and always have been. People ain't going to never be fake. Yes, sir. No. You know what I'm saying? But you know this and Raymond, Raymond's got a got, got a deep history, homie. You know <laughs> yes, what I'm too. saying? Y'all, you know, I've been fucking with Raymond's homie from, from, from day one. From when I first went to the motherfucking juvenile hall. Say juvenile you know was grown men. Man, we gr man <laughs> hey, this nigga, that was hey, that was over fifty years ago. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I so but yeah, nigga been fucking with Raymond for fifty years, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Like I told Skull earlier, man, I love you niggas, man. man no man. bullshit.
Sorry, you know what I'm saying? And the Raymond's been fucking with Compton even before some juvenile. <laughs> yeah. Had a yeah. nigga that him rub shoulders with the likes of Mac. Yeah. Motherfucking Tommy. Yeah. Always been yeah. That's yeah. you know what I'm saying? And the rest out there, man. Bitter Dog Bruno was one of my mentors growing up. That was a big Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. what I'm saying. But y'all been one together, huh? We yeah, always been connected. Uh, you and Tommy was in one together, wasn't you? Me and Mac was in one TS. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 So, and I learned a lot too. And I learned a lot from Mac Thomas. Yeah, Ron yeah so too. this 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 is uh okay, this the first hate. episode of Hood Legends. Yes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? Y'all the you, you gotta, the first one that's together, on this man. motherfucker, man. Together, man. You know, so uh um, uh, man, yeah. it's, a, it's an honor for me to even be here with three real motherfuckers, man. Because real motherfuckers are so scarce out here now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That you shit, you don't know who's who. Yeah. You know because you like me and Sue, we are just time. yeah, we are just talking me and Skull earlier about Anytime. you know what I'm saying. Back in the day, a motherfucker started. They I started my career like I in the fifth grade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, yeah, that's yeah, when the motherfucker yeah. got the idea, yeah, I want to be a crip. <laughs> now, the niggas in the fifth grade, yeah, yeah, you sir. know what I'm saying? Yes, these niggas these days, they start their careers when they in their 20s. Yeah. Yeah. So they ain't, got, they ain't got that, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't even bang if I was in my 20s. Yeah, that's what I'd I'm saying. If I waited till I was in my 20s, yeah. I'd go and do something else. Well, it's a, different, it's a different scenario now. We did things for love and honor. Yeah. These motherfuckers now kind of do things for fame and money. Yeah. So it's a difference. It's a different whole new dynamic. So it ain't no saying. honor. It ain't no where well, you know but they honor is to money and fame. It ain't yeah, to, it ain't to it the homie or the hood. Yeah. We did it. Big JJ say I see you sparks. Uh, my me, regards. Me, Big Jimmy, yeah that's Jay. Jimmy. Tell Big J I send my he hear you he hear you. And yeah. then it's another yeah. point you say that Mac just said I learned from Mac when I was in T S with him man. And I was a little homie. Mac used to keep up with every crip that ever hit that yard in YTS. Mac Thomas had a known list. When you came to that yard, it was important for Mac to recognize you and put you on that list. Like you, the homie just said, man, these motherfuckers don't know left from right. They don't even know each other no more. That was very important. It is like essential for you to know who you around and what's mm -hmm. representing you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you represent. Yeah, exactly. But you should understand and always know what's representing you. Yeah. Because some of these dudes got a gender that's way out of space. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I saying? agree with that. Yeah. And they ain't staying true to this crypt. Yeah. This crypt is ass. Let me say it again. And ass one for one don't come from me. They come from Raymond Washington. Yeah. As a young motherfucker, I met Raymond. I asked him what the script was about. Oh, and this cripping is straight up about ass one for me. Because I mean, see me straight and Skull was just talking about the G code earlier. Uh -huh. And I was telling him, you know, that's what we live by. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we grew down. up, we grew up on the G code. Yes. You know what I'm saying? These youngsters Niggas today, homie, now, they it's don't man. have a they don't have a clue about hey. what the G code really means. No, because the way we conduct ourselves is weird to them. They, no. look at, they, they look at these shit as sucker because they can't blame themselves to act the way we act toward each other. Well, you can't you nobody know, they can't they can't because they didn't grow up in love. Yeah, we grew up we grew up you know who his mama, his mama, yeah. you know, you you, you know everybody know each other. You know, these dudes is insurgents. Most of the dudes like in my hood and damn near every other hood, they didn't grow up in the hood now. They grew up in a different era though. So we grew we grew up in an era, man, where we didn't have all these smartphones and communication devices and information that yeah. so we grew up basically we knew each other and respected and loved one another, but we grew up in an era where we didn't do too much talking. We didn't do too much, you know, spreading our business about Praise so old Praise old said, tell his homies what's up. Fade yeah. the black, nigga. That's it. That was our yeah. motto. Fade the black. Fade the black yeah. and stand on top with the blue. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but this is different. And we recognize OGs recognize that these motherfuckers is up against something different than we work. But still, 
the basics, the principles, the essence of what we do, we do it together, man. We do it for one another, to build one another, to take us from where we are to collectively to where we need to be. These niggas is on some me shit. Yeah. That me shit. Me, 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 me. Yeah. Me, me, me. Not in this cricket. Yeah. It ain't. It ain't gonna get you no more. Can't Homie, take I'm it to the grave with me. Can't I know take it to the grave with me. Yeah. Yeah. I know these Christians, Wayne Washington, down to these young little punks going around here thinking they're Chris right now, but they not because they whole essence about what they do ain't yeah. with this blue flag across the whole motherfucking universe. That's what you need to be about. Think big. You know? Think why, because Chris is yeah. big. And at the end of the day, homie, don't these 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 cats these days, homie, they don't even attempt to do no homework. They don't even attempt to find out how the hood started. Who started their hood? Who their big homies are? How the how the war started? Who they enemies? That they don't even attempt to do no homework. None of I'm gonna tell you a story. So I first, so Raymond Avenue came out in 1973, but Raymond Washington didn't learn about Raymond Avenue until 1977 when he got out of prison. And we had a trip meeting that sitting up the bar. Uh, so Ricky Sally, Ricky Sally's got knocked down. We had a big crib meeting up there. I was the nigga with the blue rag, but all the rest of Chris knew about it. Raymond heard about it, but he was a Chris. I was the nigga with the blue rag that walked up on Raymond, young Crip, dangling in my head up the cross, dangling my head, walked up on my Asian dude's blue rag in the head, and said, Raymond. <laughs> Was Spark, Raymond Avenue, West Side Crip. All the rest of these niggas in this meeting know us. And it's an honor and a pleasure to meet you, cuz. And he just looked at me and said, cuz, you know what? I heard about y'all, and I'm gonna say one thing to y'all. I love y'all name. <laughs> <laughs> say, I love y'all name. I love y'all name. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond, yeah. Raymond, was, first, Raymond, Raymond yeah. was first introduced to us on a yeah. personal note at Sentinella Park yeah. in 1977 at a Ricky Silas crib meeting when all the homies got together and was trying to get to the bottom of that. That's yeah. the rent. That was the introduction. And to us, you know, that was an honor to meet Rank, to, to, to walk up on Rank. Yeah. Nowadays, these motherfuckers don't give a fuck about who they are. Because they, because they don't leave. But see, cause the, like you say, it's a different era, homie. It is. You know what I'm saying? It, it was, was back honor, then. Bro. It was an honor. That's the big homie. That's that the, was an honor. That bro. was a fucking yeah. honor. Was you know what I'm saying? I remember when I first met Took, homie, over there. That, that you know, he came in the, when he was over there at the Red House. But you know what I'm saying? He came in the hood on Willow over there where Killer Wayne live at. And the first time I met Took, homie, I was like, God damn, that's Big Tooky. You know what I'm saying? I was like, God, man. Go, Oh, okay, good luck. Just say that's for you. It was a motherfucking honor, homie, yes. for me to meet Cuz, homie, and then for just for Cuz to acknowledge me and, and tell me what's up, little Cuz, homie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't never forget that. Nah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's like catching Santa Claus at Christmas, yeah. putting something under the tree or something, homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But these these youngsters, right? These youngsters, they don't got a clue, homie. They really don't, and, and they need to get a hold of them. Need to know how to deal for the better collective for everybody. Yeah. Not for yourself. Deal for everybody. You see what I want to do, homie? I want to do a follow up yes. over here, like I'm gonna do a follow up in some more hoods, but have the young homies and see what their perspective really is about crippling. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. That would. You be, know that, would that be. way. We can still teach them something in the process once we hear they perspective. Yeah, yeah. We can get into a middle place. Exactly. The ones that's true to this. Yeah. Yeah, because because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying. A lot of them, they ain't, they don't even, they ain't got a clue, homie. You know what I'm saying? Whatsoever. And but it's some of them that's willing to listen. You know what I'm saying? Like you say, the ones that's receptive. They gonna suck game up, homie, up. and them and and hopefully them be the leaders, cause uh, you know, cause you know, in every hood, you know what I'm saying, and you got some leaders and you got some that's just dummies, <laughs> you know, for real. <laughs> but if you got the leaders to suck the game up, they can guide the ones that's, you know, that need to be guided. Can I say this about about this leader and follower thing? I'm gonna tell you something, man. I learned this when I hit San Quentin in 1983. 
And I'm gonna tell you something about that. And I always considered myself, man, a crip. Yeah, I never really even, I always considered myself a crip, first yeah. and foremost. I ain't never considered myself, you know, although my homies, some of my homies looked up to some of my actions as, as being a motherfucker that sports getting yeah. hurt shit. But I never considered myself no bigger, no less yeah. than all of them. And I'm gonna tell you something else, homie. The best followers out there, the best followers, the niggas that follow the real, the niggas that understand the real, the niggas that get behind the real, yeah. them is your best leaders. Yeah. Them is your best motherfucking leaders yeah. right there in the mate. In the mate. The niggas that get behind and see something real. Yeah. Because we all, we second generation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We gravitated towards what yeah. we thought was real, that was worthy mm -hmm. of us. We was all some down motherfuckers. You know, because when we when, when when I started, we started, they was calling us baby crips. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm saying? But if you look at it, gangster, look at the OGs and then yeah. look at the second generation. Yeah. Okay, the OGs, it ain't too many little little old it ain't too many little oldies. It ain't yeah. too many yeah. uh little uh, yeah, Hardy. yeah, ain't no yeah. littles. But when that second yeah. generation came, yeah. and we kept our own name, gang, big gang, yeah. uh, sports. You know, when that second generation came, then you you started seeing motherfuckers. The next motherfucker around yeah. saying, "Oh, these niggas." And then I had a little squawk. Yeah, yeah. Some the little scub came yeah. along. Yeah. Look, you know, niggas was like, this. "Yeah, they want the yeah. second generation." Yeah, the first yeah. generation. And the baby West Side Crips yeah. had their own name. So motherfuckers get it interacting like I was a baby West Side Crip. Yeah. But the homies think yeah. I'm an OG Crip. Yeah. Yeah. And I baby consider myself. Yeah, we consider, yeah. Because yeah. I was a because baby Because of motherfucker, crib, yeah. But I was small. Yeah. But we took it. I'm not the, the spur, the homies, the big homies, I love them. They put this game down like it was supposed to be. They kept us together. That's something we always respected. But as far as going out there, man, and getting in the grime of things about how real this shit is, yeah. we must salute that second generation. Yeah, well, yeah, with our mom, it'll never, it'll never be another generation like us, homie. Yeah. Into eternity. Yeah, homie. That second look, generation, homie. Raymond. With all due respect, I love him, and I love all my G's. Just real. Raymond started something, homie. A coach. He started a game first. Turned into a coach. No doubt about it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. But that second generation is the one that called this shit a storm. Yeah. Yeah, so without we, a doubt. We call you know what I'm saying? It can, and it'll never be another generation inside, like us, girl. No, inside and outside. You know? And, and, at the end of the, and at the end of the day, homie. Yes, sir. If, if anybody can try to get this shit together, we the only ones that can do it. Yes, Can't nobody do it but us. If we don't do it, it'll never happen. Because yes, it's all standing on our foundation. It's, it's all standing on our foundation, homie. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, as you know, it's been, it's been plenty of motherfuckers that wanted to be BG dudes. My, you know, I'll be, I, but I was like, no. You know what I'm saying? But guess what happened? Guess what happened? My motherfucking son ended up being it. <laughs> the much as as much as I tried to keep him away from it, you know what I'm saying. I mean, both of my sons, you know what I'm saying. But as much as much as I tried to keep him away from this banging, this banging, homie. But you know what I'm saying. But I failed because I went to prison, and I wasn't there. Boots on the ground. Yeah, he came to see me. We had our talks, all, but it's different once you leave that prison and that the world is influencing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I know if I wouldn't have went to prison, it wouldn't be like it is. But by him hearing about his daddy this, his daddy that, oh, your daddy did that, then he like, shit, I want to be like my daddy. You know what I'm saying? That's what happened to my son. You know? Yeah, so that yeah, that's you know, but that that's why you know it's so important, homie, for for you know I be telling these youngsters, man, take care of your kids, man. You know what I'm saying? Take care of your family, man, because at the end of the day, yeah, because if you if you leave your family to the you leave your family you leave your sons and your daughters to the world, it ain't gonna be a good look. Yeah. Young, old, and in between. Take, take care, care of your family, family man. Like family told, first. When I got out of prison, homie, I said, I told certain homie, I said, yeah, my brothers and stuff was out here. You know, they was on that door. I said, but I'm the beast from that family. 
I let them know. I said, I'm the beast of that family. It's your so now that I'm out, shit, it's not going to be like like it was when y'all running through there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. And I'm doing, I'm living it right now today. You know? Spark, Spark, how, how, many, how, how many years did you in prison? I walked off 35 bullets, huh? 35 years. Yes, sir. We got 35 years right here. Yes, How many years you walked off, man? 32. 32 years right here. Let's go. I know what you, you man. I didn't walk once all at once like them. But you didn't walk them. But I walked them. Yeah. 20 some years to Ex exactly. Now, I, me, can I add something to that? In that whole 35 years, from start to finish, nigga, it wasn't nothing but blue rag on mine. Yeah. Nigga, the whole oh, that's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The whole time, my right. it wasn't nothing but blue rag on mine. So that's why I did do that. Point right. Right. Hey, your, oh, your, hey, hey, your homie said you can be tiny crazy if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him we don't need no time. We, we don't need no time. <laughs> Nigga, ain't very a tiny at this point, it would be, would be, yeah. At this point, you should leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell my homie Crazo, the minute he walk off 75 years, we can talk. Hello. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's the battles we went yeah. through up yeah. in that. Nigga, yeah. now, that's a whole that's different that's segment. That's, 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 that's whole They say, like, uh, can, you give, can you give them the history of the fame? Uh, indeed, I can. Nigga, you talking to a nigga that was there on day one. Hello. You know what I'm saying? What's it? What it really? The history, the history of the nigga, that fame was born in 1973, nigga, on 119th Street, nigga, in between Vermont and Butler, nigga, and it comprised Crips that me myself, I was a baby West Side Crip. Mm -hmm. The block was out, the UG was already out. These niggas was going around the hood, right? When we all went to school together, where's that? Yeah. Henry, Henry Clay. Clay. I was in Henry Clay at the time. You know what I'm Henry Clay. But Clark. I was wise enough to know we can't have all these different motherfuckers claiming these different entities in cricket. So we had to come up with a name. And we came up with that name That's in 1973, right, yeah. right there at West Athens elementary school in the cafeteria on one summer day in 1973. It was, it was maybe West Side, UGs, and blocks up in there. Niggas claiming different things, and everybody got together. We was, and we all lived over here. We all lived on this side. Yeah. On this side of Imperial. But Crippen went north of Imperial, yeah. not south at this point. Yeah. Raymond Avenue went from 120th Street north that way when it first started. That's where it all came about at. Right there, West Athens. It was on the 18th. Yeah, it was it was it was too many on the 18th side. It was it was too many different. It was baby West Side Block Underground over here. Got together undergrounds that was over here. Blocks that was over here, Brutal. baby West Sides that was over here, got together and say, look, okay, we're gonna stop all this bullshit. We were smart enough to come together at that young age and do these kind of things. We had one older homeboy, B.J. Jenkins, yeah. who was there, but we was sharp enough to know that this can't survive like this even at a young age. So let's come up with something that we all represent. We went to school together, stop all this block shit, this UG shit, this baby West Side shit. When you roll your feet, I live in the zigzag. Yeah. And I used to go out there every morning, they smoke a joint, and right in my backyard, nigga, it, uh, I, I might see uh, underground crib. You know what I'm saying? Or Snoop, yeah. baby West Side crib, in the same fucking house. So we put a stop to that. And we came up, we ran through some names, we understanding where we were. We all that was there knew and respected Raymond Washington. Yeah. Everybody there yeah. knew yeah. of him. Everybody, DJ, my, I, have, I didn't meet Raymond at this time. I was a youngster. I was probably about 13 at the time, yeah. maybe 14. But I was already a big West Side. We were already put on. Ears pierced, Ace do song. Mm -hmm. Do or die. Yeah. I was in a do or die. And I was do or one, die. I was the one. My brother remind me that it was also a lot of money makers in our. Yeah. So hustle. some of them niggas said, okay, we can agree on this name, Raymond Avenue. Yeah, it was hustling. We can, but some of them was like we Raymond Avenue. Wesley Harris, 
Them niggas was money makers. Yeah. Them niggas was pure yeah. money. We had pure money makers in our hood, and we had pure killer crips in our hood. But they was like, well, let's come out of here with Raymond Up. But I was wise enough to know these niggas didn't go to the crib means I went to. Yeah. That, that wasn't going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. That Raymond Hustler shit wasn't going to make it. And my brother reminded me, because this is something that you, you 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 just don't, you know. My brother, he said, it's spoiled. You was at that thing and you told me. No, we crips. It ain't, it ain't. We crips. Nigga, don't write no Raymond Hustler. Yeah. Yeah. And I did at yeah. a young age. And I was serious about that. That's fuck. Yeah. Pop so head. Young Snoop, oh, what's up, love one? Uh, young we Snoop, the, the, it was like that, Young yeah, Snoop. Yeah. When we came up, we had to be versatile. We, okay. Nowadays, you call on, it multitasking, right? Come right? Come but we had to hey, be what's, what's up, little sis? Go we ahead. had to be everything oh, wrapped up in one. Because yeah. yeah. our influences, that was our influences coming up. We was like, it was, it was hardcore crib. It was hustling. It was like the players. You had to. Michael Cassetti was making down the street talking to the pimpers. So we had to learn all this shit was part of our environment all at one time. Yeah. And we just hold out. Starting our own shit being yeah. raised in the crib. And we decided to shit, you know. Yeah. Finding our own identity. That's right. Yeah, but that's the history. Excuse me for a minute. That was Jim oh, Pop Harris. Another old from Raymond Avenue. That was Pop Harris. Another old dude from Raymond Avenue. Crip, and he would like just. You don't know that he wanted to be here, man, to share some of his wisdom and history of his cripping, man. And uh, that was uh, uh, extremely one of my road dogs, you know. Uh, and hopefully he'll make it. He's doing some, you know, we all with him in, in prayer, you know. Uh, and hopefully he'll make it through his situation, brother. Yeah, the history of this Raymond Avenue Crip is deep. You know what I'm saying? As we said, you know, it was introduced to Raymond, it was introduced to Raymond Washington himself. You know what I'm saying? Raymond, although I, I met Raymond four times in my life, at two crib meetings, at the skate ring, and the last time I've seen him was at a party over in uh, Q102. Some of the biggest influence in my life, of course, Mac Thomas. I, me and him hit it. Yeah. I was a young homie with him in YTS, and he was such a motherfucking influence in me and his crib. It ain't no more, but the biggest influence in this cricket was a man by the name of Odie. Odie Burns from the Black Crip, you know what I'm saying? Or oh, ran the West Side at the time. Now, I mean, Took, I love Took, you know what I'm saying? I love all my OG homeboys, you know what I'm saying? But this nigga, he impressed me so much. And this is the dude I gravitated towards in my trip. And this is who I tailored my trip and after. Because he was a pure crip. He was a, uh, a, a crip to the umpteenth degree and he was highly respected everywhere. I love Took. I love him to my heart. But he was not in Compton. Took was doing too much for Mac, especially Mac Tom. Then that's all needs to be said. He was yeah. just doing too much over there with Mac and Mac. Odie, on the other hand, was somebody I used to look at. I used to look at Took, but Odie, on the other hand, was somebody that was highly respected and loved on the East Side Conference, especially Conference. Yeah. And no doubt about it, he was West Side. He was folk. In fact, we used to go to skating rink. It used to be Odie time at the Rosecrans Skating Rink. And trust me when I tell you this, Big Jamaican. Just get out. Yeah. Big Jamel, Big Took. Took, rest in peace. I love you, homie. Mm -hmm. and you yeah, know you know, I was, you know, I was, I don't mean to cut you off, homie, but I was real motherfucking disappointed in that bullshit Jamel said, homie. Yeah, I, I mean, Jamel, you know, like I say, he, he, he falling back on this a me Jamel thing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah, I didn't know Jamel really good. I ran into him a few times, but I was there. Yeah. And I used to, I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. You know, since I was a little homie, he was an east side dude, not yeah. a west side dude. He really didn't yeah, impress upon me. Yeah. Where yeah. I needed to, you know, push up on him and make it. But I'm pretty sure he knew what shit did. Yeah, yeah I, you know, I was. My crib is supposed to myself. Yeah, but I, I, I was, I was disappointed what he said, what he. 
Oh, I said this is a mix for that. Oh, okay. All right. I was disappointed in what he said about Took when they, yeah, when they like executed Took. You know what I'm saying? Jamel, yeah. I'm just, a, as, she, but that, you know, just going beyond. I think mean, that's the people. As a people, yeah. homie, we so short and limited on our scope and our thinking that you but, get motherfuckers yeah. like him. See, what I think with him, him homie, I think that he pissed off because he, he ain't the motherfucker that he wanted to be. No, Ray, Raymond is the motherfucker. He can't yeah, be that. But I'm, but I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. He can't he, be that. <laughs> yeah. No, Raymond, look, fuck, you on the east side, nigga. Yeah. Raymond yeah. is the man. Yeah, Boy, yeah. Play, play yeah. Your role. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of motherfuckers said, yeah. Over here, you used to run with you and go under him and all that shit, but you east side, nigga. To yeah, west side. yeah. yeah. To, you wanted to be up under him and wanted to, you know, do your little muscle thing, baby. Yeah. Took had a big old rep. There ain't no doubt. About yeah, it. yeah. And still got the big. Yeah, rep. yeah. That's what I'm big saying. Big. He he didn't. He ain't never get the accolades that he wanted. He's not gonna never. He get ain't gonna never get them. Exactly. Your accolades start at home. Yes. Yeah. Your accolades yeah. fuck with the outside world thinking you if you a real nigga. Yeah. See, it's a whole bunch of these crips niggas that ain't out there in the public realm, but these real crips know them. Yeah. These real crip niggas. Know who them crip niggas is that's lurking, you know, like the spook by the dope. Yeah. You got real crip niggas that don't want to be in this line much. Mm -hmm. You got real crip niggas who silence is their religion. Yeah. But real crip niggas know who they are. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We all know who they are. Yeah, enough. exactly. But you got some that'll come out and speak on it, and you got some that's just laying there mm -hmm. looking at it. Them niggas is real crisp niggas. There is no difference. Yeah. I used to be one of them niggas like a spook by the dope. Yeah. I didn't think this shit meant to be talked about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, in my old age, I think it does. Yeah. You know? and I motherfuckers need to know the real. And if that influence another OG home boy yeah. that's sitting silently by, mm -hmm. to come out and give up some of that wisdom from the top, from this blue shit, please do so, man. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't come, I didn't have any kiss of me, you know? Yeah. yeah, I'm speaking on it, huh? Yeah. Point blank. That's, what mm -hmm. That's the truth, huh? Mm. But yeah, Jamel, he disappointed a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And he shouldn't have never, ever, man. You know what I'm saying? I, I just, look, it's just family. It's just most of our black families come, you know, my mom and my dad, they used to say, look, Marcia, because I used to speak bad about a whole bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah. They look, like, if you can't say nothing good about a motherfucker. Don't say nothing. If you, if you, if you, can't, say, if you, you can't say nothing good about a motherfucker, you need to keep your goddamn mouth. <laughs> don't say nothing. Yeah. Big homie right there. Like, the especially a motherfucker you like you. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah, that's the truth right there, man. Mm, here we go, right here. Huh? Big Took, rest in peace. Blue Rays, Black Redemption, baby. He hung out over here on several occasions. Yes, sir. Hey, talking about the architect. Steve Champion, Craig Rose. His mama them on the K9 studio right down the street from my house. Oh, yeah, this book, this book here is the architect. By the OG homies from Raymond, that R that R A C, Treach and Evil. Mm -hmm. Shit, Treach and Evil been down what about forty? Forty. They've been down forty plus. They've been they, down forty plus years. And they, and they are three the hard way. That's man. Lisa, Johnny, and the Those are all took. Yeah. And trick. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's all. Yeah. Them death row Chris. Yeah. These just yeah. Yeah, that's thank thank God that the, the governor uh, towed death row down. You know God. what I'm saying? Thank, thank God, God for that. Thank so God. I ain't no more death row in California. So sad to say, as talented as them niggas, as talented as these key ways are, yeah, that talent didn't begin to blossom until they got this prison. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. It would have been a whole different story if we do just live a little longer. Yeah, and be, well, maybe things is meant to be because they doing what they doing. They're yeah. Speaking on. And they scholars now. Yeah. Not only is they scholars, them niggas are still down from the nifth degree, huh? So yeah, because it, it's crazy. And if you get the architect, the architect is the brain. Yeah. What, what you pick that book up, the architect? 
Uh, where they, where they, they got it at Barnes and Nobles or Amazon? Amazon, Amazon. Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble and Amazon. Right off Manchester and uh, Manchester and Western at the bookstore. I forgot the name of the bookstore. It's a bookstore on Manchester and Western. You can get it too. Yes, sir. But anyway, man, and this is a good one in the muffler. Yeah, anyway, man, look, man, this cricket is real, ain't going nowhere. Louis, look, my boy Louis said, what about the brother that had to survive in the hood that wasn't banging? I don't, I'm really homie, but, but like in my hood, if, if niggas that wasn't banging, it ain't like the homies pressed them or nothing. You know what I'm saying? There's a whole lot of motherfuckers that didn't bang there. My little brothers never banged. Yeah. In our hood, if you wasn't built of the same shit, <laughs> yeah. You couldn't bang. It was niggas that we didn't, you know, we knew growing up, let that nigga go to school. Yeah. Let him go do what he do. Yeah. Because he ain't ready for this motherfucking shit that we do. Yeah. You got to recognize that we didn't hate him because we don't need him. We didn't hate him, he was just some brother in the hood. We all knew him from school. We knew this nigga up. here though. Ain't ready for the shit we do. Yeah. We out here, man, with these 16 switches in our hoops, you know what I'm saying? We out here squabbling like it's a pastime. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, you yeah. know, back in the day, a motherfucker just be driving down the street and just bail out on a motherfucker in his own, homie. His own, on site, homie. I miss that shit too, boy. That, that used to be the shit, homie. Same thing, man. If you, if you can't stand the side of blood, don't be a servant. Yeah. But look, man. <laughs> look, check this out. If you can't stand the side of blood, please don't be a prick. And you got to recognize those that can stand that side and those that don't hurt him in the game. Because this shit is real. This shit is a war machine, man. Yeah. We and our warrior years from 15 to 35 years old, and we ain't playing when we put this blue rag in our pocket. Mm -hmm. When we put that earring in our ear. When yeah, we put see, that ace dude song. You see the difference, the difference now? Between now and then, homie, when we when we was doing this shit, when we started, we really loved this shit, homie. We did it for love. And we love. did it for exactly, homie. We it was we, it was it was, it was like nigga the the the, 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 the homies in the in the motherfucking yeah. The man, the homies in the hood was the homies in the hood. We put the homies in the hood before everything, homie. We did it for before love. our own, before our own lives. Yeah. We did it for love. Love, man. exactly. Cause I used to go do stains for my hood, right? Me, bud, I go do stains. I knock off, me and bud are knock off, uh, uh, me and Snoop, we are knock off 30, 40 thousand. Yeah. Then this is money back in them days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come yeah. straight to the hood, dropping gold ropes on yeah. home board. We tell the homies to go buy a car. We, we, the first thing we did with our money, is we came in the park and just started dropping that mo. I mean, we didn't have no sense of much, yeah. Yeah. but that's where our heart mind was. That's where the hard was, yeah. That's where our heart, heart mind, mind. We yeah. didn't have no sense of money, because we was young. Ain't nobody there to school us about all these things and robberies we yeah, doing. And, and what buying all those series for three or four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My, <laughs> you know, we just coming in the park. Look, uh, homie, go put a, here, nigga, here go 1500 Go put a call on the roof. Nigga, here go. 15, although some of them did what they did with the money, yeah. he was kind of upset and that got kind of mixed up. But that's why our heart, if you look at us, that's where our heart was. We yeah. was doing shit for the hood. We wasn't doing it for ourselves. We was, uh, me, myself, I think I was always all right because I would, I kicked down a dope, <laughs> knocked down a jewelry store. I thought I was going to be rich forever. <laughs> yeah, real. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really give a fuck about what we were mm -hmm. But that's what we used to do. We used to try and build each other, trying to start these little low riders, put homies in low low. You know, try to build this yeah. shit up. Shit went for a no little array. You know what I'm saying? Raymond Avenue, if you want to go deep, deep, deep into how we were trying to structure our hood, Raymond Avenue was one of the first hoods that was kicking dope dealers out from Detroit, New York, whatever. They couldn't, it was one of the first hoods in the early 80s, late 1970s. That was saying if you ain't sir, no. about this way, you sir. can't sell. Sir, no. We was yeah. one of the first ones to do that. Now OGs go back like that. They know that we had niggas from all over the United States out here yeah. trying to get their bet on. 
But Raymond Avenue was some one of the first shit. Now we knew who the powers that be that was in the game and we suspected that as far yeah. as out here. But the niggas that was coming from you know elsewhere, you know, said, no, nah, nigga, the Rangers was the first motherfucker that wanted to own back. Yeah. First motherfucker way out there. Way back in the day. We paid the cost for that. Because yeah. the white folks wiped out a generation of us from the moves we just putting down yeah. in that result. Right yeah, there, there's there's a whole generation yeah. of the ring. That's how we ended up doing we all that time. We were serious about <laughs> what we were saying. We had a meeting, and we were serious about it. We acted on that meeting. And if you wasn't from California, you didn't know certain motherfuckers in the game, you couldn't be, you can't do that on you. And we got you one, maybe two one. Get your motherfucking package, you know, you know coach, take that shit across the other guy, though. Oh, cross west. Yeah. Never, because you can't do that over here. And then everybody, all the rest of the hood follows suit. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, you know what I'm saying? You get somebody like Free Ray Rick, you know, he he can't do that without the movie. You know what I'm saying? Giving him the okay to do that. Raymond Avenue was just the first motherfucker in that vein. Yeah. And that's for real. And that's another feather to this yeah. trip. Yeah. Because now all Crip rules run their own operation. Mm-hmm. It ain't no motherfucker coming in from New York with no orange hat on and no green TV. You know what I'm saying? Talking about they got a dope house, you know, in the green. It ain't no. gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't, it no, just no. ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. But it was going on in the yeah. late 70s. Jamaica's trying to come in. In the early 80s. Yes, yeah, Jamaica's too. And we got <coughs> mad about Greg, it. Greg, what's up? Just couldn't do it here. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was the avenue. All good. And that chicken good. Got some more. Oh, I got something for y'all. Y'all gonna eat. Like I told you, boy, eat. Look at you gonna eat. <laughs> Pork gonna eat. Fish gonna eat. Yeah, they're chasing them. They're chasing them. What the bottle of it? Where's it at? Look, yeah. on the floor right there. Look. Right there, where? Yeah, I ain't got no cup. He said, can a brother from the hood be an OG? You know what I'm saying? Oh, like I said, OG mean original gangster. Now, you know what I'm saying? If you a gangster, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be banging to be a gangster because I know some gangsters that don't bang. But you got to be a gangster, though. Yeah, we were doing some gangster You know what I'm saying? Oh, they are doing that gangster yeah. shit. Yeah. 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 And then, hey. Yeah. On your mama's floor. Yeah. And then, end of the day, you got to be a gangster. Hey, me and Squad got a hold to some, some, some blocks of weed, right? <laughs> we, we, split it, we split it all kind of paper on his mama's floor. We went got some cheese shredders. <laughs> you see that, this Start grinding that shit. Start grinding that shit. Like, yeah, that's the first taste of nigga had like Grinding that shit. This is a real mix, hustle. Mixing yeah. that shit with some gin seed. <laughs> <laughs> we had the little that block, block of that gang, yeah. man. Yeah. Mixing that shit with some gin seed, some of that Colombian yeah. gold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And try, and try that mother, motherfucker used to call that yeah. boat. Yeah. Yeah. Mother had, had yeah. that boat yeah. back in the day. That's when they yeah. five dollars. Yeah, five dollars and yeah, yeah. 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 Three, three fingers for five dollars and, and five fingers for ten. Yeah. You yes, know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, that yeah, was back in the day for I, real. I, yeah. Be some hustle like that, that, that Jack and the Clipper truck over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we that, that. yeah, we yeah. That shit, nigga like fuck yeah. that. Let me get this pistol and just yeah. go take some shit. That's how I love it. Yeah. Nigga didn't understand. Yeah. That you gotta I, keep I'm being honest because nigga just right. wasn't good at it. You know, yeah. put them guns in nigga head. Let's go. <laughs> we was on that page, you know. It was one thing, man, I got from baby, from baby, yeah. baby Wayne when I was in jail with baby Wayne. I mean, him was in jail a lot. And he always used to tell me, and I, you know, I really, when he used to tell me this shit, I was young, he used to say, Spark, don't never let a motherfucker take your kindness for weakness. Yeah. And I always took that to me as a young motherfucker growing up with, with Baby Hancho. I always took that to me as soon as a motherfucker did something <laughs> that I felt like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Nigga, I was upside the nigga. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, was, it was just no in-between with me. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know what it man. You know. I think what it was, it had a lot to do. We was young dudes, but it was normal for us to be around, like, we 15, So 15. who is this, somebody? It was normal for us to be around dudes in their 30s. And oh, and yeah, 20s. yeah, because I always hung around older homies. I never yeah. really hung around homies you know, my age. Yeah. 
That's the homeboy Wiz yeah. driving up in this truck. What's up, young Wiz? You know somebody said, can you uh, can you tell me on who was the first generation from the Raymonds by names? Oh, of course. I can tell you all of them, every last <laughs> one of them. You're, first of all, let's start with big sports. One was player, LaVell player, Michael player, Craig Rose, um, Daryl Tate. Yeah, do I have to go nicknames or real names? BJ, uh, Kato, uh, Ray Ray, Jap. No, they, that was, they, they, they the Wayne Sr. group was paid. They made, and we talking about first generation. Raymond, Raymond, yeah. Raymond, the original Raymond, the original Raymond, the niggas that was at the school. Yeah. Big Kill Kill, yeah. uh, uh, Kojak, Twilight, uh, Big Bug, Skull, uh, let me see what you're missing. I'm missing any, because I don't want to miss the Pop Harris. Pop Harris. Uh, Nicky Bruiser, rest in peace. Uh, let me see. Let me keep, let me keep going. Because I know oh. right now I'm old age. Oh, I'm missing some people, man, that I shouldn't be missing, man. Um, so I said, uh, I, I, I shouldn't mention him, but I am on this prison because the nigga ended up sending, yeah, the nigga ended up sending me to prison. Uh, but I got to, as far as if you're going back to, let's just be honest with it. Let's just be truthful with it. Uh, before Boogie, before Boogie went bad, that nigga was one of the baddest Raven Avenue Crips in the world. It, yes, it was Gary Connors, Gregory Agnes. Yeah, yeah, Gregory Agnes. Uh, okay, so Michael the Jones. What's the big uh, dude? The big dude. The big dude. The big dude. Who got a boot? Adrian Kane. Adrian Who got a big fat so? Uh, who else is in that mission? Did I say Kato? Uh, Daryl Moody was there. That's Kato's brother. Uh, who else is there? Uh, Scooby. He was there. Uh, Ronald Evans. Tudor. Benson Moore. He was there. Bandit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's a whole See, lot of motherfuckers there. At that, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was about maybe 25 people yeah. at that meeting. And I'm pretty sure I'm missing somebody, yeah. but I've recovered most of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I and know we went no more than like 30, 35 when we first we, like, we, was like, all, we was all at that meeting. That meeting Chris. happened right there in the cafeteria yeah. Yeah. at West Athens High School on 119th Street. Yeah. Ah. So yeah, it was about 25 people, and I'm pretty sure I covered them all. Uh, Bigfoot, I missed him. Mm -hmm. He was there. That's Reginald Herbie. That's Reginald Herbie. Uh, I apologize, man, if you're out there and I missed y'all. But I think I covered most of them. Most of them. Oh, Benny Jenkins? Yeah. I think I said Benny Jenkins. Yeah, I think I said Benny Jenkins, man. Okay. We used to look up to him. Yeah, now Benny Jenkins was just like the OC West Side script. And he was more or less the moderator in the situation because he was older than everybody else that was there. But he was original. He was the West Side script. So he was put on Crippin uh, through the line, through the script line. I was put on Crippin. When I, because I, I was under 15 when I was put on the yeah. so I just had to squabble the G man and a, another yeah. one. But I'm working, it ain't yeah. no problem. Yeah, beat up G man? I, yeah, I beat no, it. was a little G man. It was a little G man, and I was somebody else right there at the, at the Jack in the Box and Alley, cross street from the Rio. Yeah. And big Odie, all B and all them. That's when I got my cousin, Big OD. But I was under 15, but if he was over 15, you had to walk that crip line to get up in that shit. Somebody, you somebody, uh, on the west side. You had to walk yeah. that crip line up in Sportsman Park, yeah. which is just the orange right now. Big old. And if you didn't get through that crip line, you, know, yeah. you just couldn't make it. You ain't <laughs> crippin'. Yeah. So you, somebody, you, you are nice. Like you ain't. If you on was over fifteen, 
you had to get through that crip line. Because if you didn't get yeah. through there, nigga, and niggas was trying to knock you out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Mock, you could squabble and we back. Did all yeah. mock ones in the but park. you had to make it through. You had to make it through the line. I, I started cripping before that. I started cripping yeah. when I was like 12. I was a baby crip. Yeah, yeah. So I had to just squabble for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. This, like, this, this, Somebody this, say, how did, how did y'all start beefing with Denver Lane? And, because Lane, and when so, did y'all start so beefing? At, at the time, it, it ain't it ain't so much as us beefing with Denver Lane. At the time, we was crippling. Denver Lane was beefing with Crips. Yeah. And so us, Raymond Avenue's always looked at themselves as like the special forces of Crips. We yeah. always looked yeah. at ourselves as like on the west side. The but when we did it, nigga, we didn't put in work everywhere. Yeah. Side yeah. Comes, and, you know, so we ain't got to go through that. But as as a hood, we used to talk with one another. We used to like look at ourselves as like the special forces of the crib. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if Hoover and at this time Hoover, that used to be with Strawberry from Nine Dudes, Moomoo. like every day. No, Hoover was a little home. But I used to be with Strawberry, and Strawberry was right there, right right down the street from Marvin Kazik and all the niggas. And then niggas was giving them problems. So. Yeah, yeah, let's we go. Out, we was we rolling through that, yeah. but because they was giving who was proud, and who was to us was Crips. Back yeah. in them days, yeah. Yeah. Crips yeah. came yeah. before Raymond Avenue, Crips. so yeah. Crips came before who? Mm-hmm. Crips became oh, before who? Crips, yeah. Crips became before Grandy. Yeah. Crips became before Eastside. You know what I'm saying? Crip, nigga, if you was a Crip. We connect. And you was having a problem. Y'all didn't have to tell the rangers nothing. We if we connect. hear about it, oh, gangster and them is in it with the power rules over there. Yeah. Nigga, we might, me, Wiz, and Bud might be in here one day just ticket. Even like gangsters, y'all might not even know nothing. Kind of yeah. Gangsters, we looked at ourselves as like the special forces of credit. We'd be like, okay, gangster and them is in some shit. Them niggas ain't, when let's roll through these niggas' hoods because. These niggas is giving Santana some props. The Ramers will get up, go steal a van. You know, we got some brand new guns. <laughs> nigga, who y'all want to go get today? Yeah. He like might go get anybody. Like, and what? We didn't discriminate, nigga, on like skin color. We hit everybody. Nigga, we was hitting everybody. So the South Low, that was up and coming in our hood, they wouldn't even survive without us. We used to go. Nigga, not, you know, that we had something against the old 10 yeah. but the South Low was our backyard. He's like, yeah. we were just, we was young. We yeah. watched them come go, to existence. The Ramers would go out there and, and fuck with them. We so, watched them come to existence. Them out. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah no. South Low, we watched them grow up. And if it wasn't for Ramers, they wouldn't even be in yeah. existence. Who was, who, who was y'all first, uh, I'll say, uh, enemy? That y'all considered y'all first enemy? Our first enemies was the Atlas Park Boys. No, well, our very first enemies, as far as Crippen was concerned, was the brand. We needed to knock them back. Yeah. As far as Crippen. But yeah. Raymond's very first enemies, because Big Odie and Big Took, they wanted Helen Kellen Park for some reason. Yeah. So it was the Helen Kellen Park Boys. As far as in this hood, it's the Helen Kellen Park Boys was our very first, like, let's wipe them out. And who, so, who, who were they? Oh, Mark Howard. Yeah, it was yeah. it was a it was a yeah. bunch, it was a bunch of them. Like, so yeah. the Helen yeah. Kellen Park boys we was associated with, with the Athens Park. Oh, okay. Athens Park boys and the Helen Kellen Park boys is like brothers and brothers. Yeah. But Big Took and Odie and them, they wanted to talk. You know what I'm saying? We used to have many classes with the APBs up there. So the Helen Kellen Park boys got wiped out by both the Raymonds and the Paybacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Ramos and the Ramos back yeah. chased the Helen Kelly Park boys back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if Took would have told us, or Took or, or Odie or, or Melvin would have told the Ramos to go over there and take Athens Park, believe me, Ramos probably would have went over there and took them. That's who, so our first, so our very first enemies, our very first adversaries for us, a set, a one set, our very first targeted motherfuckers that we was going to wipe out, get the yeah. fuck out the way, was the Helen Kellen Park boys. And you don't even hear about them. Y'all don't yeah. even know they was Yeah, I ain't just first time I even ever heard of. Y'all don't even know about these Raymond Avenue yeah. 
Y'all don't even know that them was bloods yeah. right up in this neighborhood. Right in the hood. Yeah. Y'all That's can't it. go find one of them motherfuckers yeah. nowhere. Hey. They had like this <laughs> too much something. It ain't, ain't, it ain't even so, nobody around here with a memory. No. <laughs> they had like two no, good something. I don't even know about that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> that, it was a Helen Kellen Park boy. That was our very. Yeah. So because you don't know about the Helen Kellen Park boy, yeah. you don't know that that was the Raymond Avenue's first avenue. And, that nigga didn't want to and in fact, in in fact, you know, sad to say, we was the paybacks and the ratings was real tight. Real tight. That's what broke us up. Yeah. Is is the is the is the, the tactics on how to get rid of the Helen Kevin Park. But that's where we fell apart. At. That's yeah. we was a little bit more serious about how to get rid of them, and because they wasn't on that page with us, we kind of like broke apart a little bit. And that's the real story. That's, yeah, that's the real story between the Raymond Avenues and the payback. So the Raymonds was a little bit more, let's say, focused and serious about getting this work done. Whereas they was, we thought, a little bit less, you know, serious about this tripping. And that's how we fell apart a little bit. We went on and did what we had to do to these uh these Helen Kellen Park boys and got them out the way. Yeah. Last of it being Mark Howard yeah. got six got six in the chest by Craig Rowe people yeah. right inside the park and that sealed the deal forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He was he Mark was Howard was trying he to had to Mark, yeah, Mark Howard was well, he didn't want to fight my, my cousin Big Old he Nah, he shoved he didn't, play he, didn't he didn't he did not want no so, so who Howard, so who was y'all who was y'all first beef with as far as Crips? The first beef as far as Crips was the Hoover. Yeah, it was the Hoover. So it was the 107. It was the 107 Hoover. And that came about behind it, a whole bunch of bullshit. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, fat souls, youngsters, I'm just talking, you know, talking. But we wasn't really at it like this with gunplay, though. No, we We, we swallowed. Well, although we went over there, we went when yeah, we first broke out, time. we went over there. Yeah. We went on, over but I'm there, saying we, we wasn't Joe like Asimow. every day saying. The all the members did up, went that was straight to Joe. Went, we went, so communication, homie, is key to everything. Homie. Communi without communication, shit was ugly. Yes. But we, since we knew each other, and it was really girls, yes. you know, who supposedly said something, did Girl, something. Man. The Raymonds geared up, went no, and knocked on and walked, knocked on their door. The Raymonds all up and down the street. Yeah. Joe came out, said, What's this for? I like what the you know, <laughs> way he had to mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We got some issues. Sam. Sam yeah. Sam say he didn't do what he did, but uh Faso and who who we, we made Faso and, and the other one nigga who said some one of the yeah. twin niggas squabble. Stacy. But it wasn't the same since then. Right after that I left and went to YA, I think. I left and was gone. Yeah, everybody got locked up. And then they was all at Washington High School, Rams and the Hoovers, they was fighting every since. They've been fighting. Every say, you know, but not no gunplay, but they'll see each other in the cafeteria, yeah. one try to steal on another. You know, man, and even my homeboy Moon, rest in peace. Yeah. He was up there squabbling like you not know, about like, south. Yeah, they but just do it through their cafeteria. That's, that that was the first the Ramans got along with most well, we all went to Washington together. So we didn't have them that trip in No, but that was the first little friction and then the one elevens is so tight with it. Yeah. You know, so saying and the Hoover and the one eleven, they got to going with the gunplay. And so that was like an out you know, they all oh, that was an outsource of that. Yeah. So there wasn't nothing gonna break up the Rangers in the one eleven. Yeah. We always been like this. Yeah, but even the Hoover and we used to still talk to the Hoover. We used to be over there with them. But when they was doing their thing, out. and we was kind of like a Cause they used to come kicking in the hood, the house parties in the hood. Us and the 111s hung out Boom, the same area. area. Every Skating day. ring everywhere. Yeah. Us and the 111s hung got the same area every day at Washington High School. But we had communication. Yeah. I mean, we had communication that kept the gun play down. The Hoovers, the Hoovers knew the Ramers, the Ramers knew the Hoovers. It was a lot of gun play going on between the Hoovers and the 111s. And we was in the middle of that because yeah. we knew both sides. We knew both. And uh, the Hoovers just come and hang out with us. One day the Hoovers came over here right around the corner right here and, and with some gunplay with the Rangers and the Hoovers. 
and that's what set it off. I think Ani got caught some buck shots. Yeah, Ani uh, got some buck shots for the game. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, who else is that? Uh, uh, they didn't get moved because Moo got away. Moo, it, it, but they See, came over here. It was just a regular party. They came over here and they caught, they caught, a, few, they caught a few hot rocks. And that's what... Uh, and yeah, that's and what, that's what, that's what, that oh, was man. the first crip on crip. Hey, look at my motherfucking crimes, man. What's up, love? What are you feeling? That's the OG Pop here. Right hey, there. man, this is the homie case. Mm -hmm. You make What's up? What's up, homie? Yes, boy? sir. The OG Pop here. What's up, What's up love, love, boy? This is my motherfucking homie, man. What's up, man? What's up, man? What's up, man? Oh, man. Hey, man, grab a chair. Pop that black chair right there. What's up, boy? Let me get some. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up man? What's up, 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 man? Written in stone in his crypt yeah. legacy. That's who I ran by. It's Mr. Pop yeah. Harris, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pop Harris. Hey, I patted my Soda Pop Harris. Harris. <laughs> Hey, so the pop there. We got, man, we got, we got a lot of history up in this motherfucker yeah, here, man. Like you got from the beginning. Yeah. I think he you was the first one to start going to prison. <laughs> yeah, he was the first yeah, one. Yeah, me and yeah. me and yeah. he was the first yeah. one to go to prison. Yeah, yeah. you went with Spuds after the mother message. Him, yeah. him, yeah. Evil, him, evil, yeah. and 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 William Cavanaugh. Yeah, they the first one. Yeah, them three. He's the first one that that started hitting the prison system from his hood. He went to prison behind an old mess ride in Helen Kelly. Paul. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was young as nigga in Chino when I was there. I yeah. turned 18. I was only 18. And, Kelly Kelly Paul. Yeah. and I was in that ride. Yeah, he was the first time we went to prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Pop Harris hit one of them in the head with a motherfucking <laughs> orange yeah, like body because he had just lost his motherfucking 15, 20 out of the dice game. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He just hit the motherfucker in the head. I'm, I know yeah. the dice. I'm I'm like, I've only been out of TS for 30 years. Yeah, why, this motherfucker, why this motherfucker do this shit? Yeah. Yeah. Probably one of them nigga had a Next chip. thing we know, we shoot dice. This master's coming from both sides of the thing. We got to get up off the dice game. And we squabbing like a motherfucker over yes. there. Yes. They up and up yeah. park now. Yeah. We not these yeah. It was a bunch of them. We was outnumbered like that. Yeah. Yeah. We got that picture on you. We was outnumbered like three to one. Uh, uh, yeah, and then we had an old punk ass yeah. on one that nice man had to get. I'm telling this nigga, let this motherfucker run, nigga, you got to get bust. This nigga dropped the gun. My dog, Ice Man, Ice Man, Spud Run. And a Mexican, and it was like, I'm right there. And Spud run, and the Mexican running for the gun. Spud get the gun, come up with that motherfucker. I'm like, Spud, you know what to do, nigga? <laughs> Nigga, Spud get to hitting everything that wasn't black. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But Pop Harris and CJ and them went to prison for that. Yeah. Me and Spud jumped in my that. Mustang CJ and we went to a concert there. <laughs> we jumped in the Mustang, nigga, and went to the farm, nigga. Mm. Raymond Avenue Crips down. Nigga. Yeah. First we went and bought us some brand new Cassies and some biscuits. Nigga, I think I bought an Ace Dude, so he might have bought some. Nigga, we left that nigga and went to the motherfucking form. And nigga, we was up in the concert. Nigga, crippin' like a motherfucker. But the homie got, the homie, him and CJ and them got caught up on that. Yeah. CJ wasn't on that. It was you and who? I was just seeing by myself. That wasn't CJ, didn't get caught up on that? No, it was just you? Just me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought CJ went. What did CJ yeah. go on? He CJ was, was on you one. You and CJ. Oh, yeah, we were with Yes, they can't say somebody said when did the uh, hundred and second strand of a Raymond start? And the Pasadena Raymonds as well. Pasadena is actually older than the hundred and ten dudes. Yeah, they was already out before ten dudes. Yeah, right. the Raymonds. Yeah, and, uh, mm -hmm. then none of them started to do. Yeah. Well, yeah. me and Snow, we was all there pops too, but yeah. yeah. But none of them success from the dudes. It's because me and Skull and all us was out here, you know, the pop. We was running over there and maintaining that shit. But that's, you know, yeah, Nugget, is, Nugget is the front man of the dude, but 
He wouldn't be nothing without us the way exactly. we was putting nah, through that. Nah, like that them, them niggas came about the 77. Yeah. yeah. yeah about, 70, nine, about 1977. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's used to meet for Pophead. Everybody here used to go over there. And they push they that thought nothing was cool. Mm -hmm. And we used to clean them. There was a guy moving yeah. over there with, with nothing. Yeah. It was the Raymond Avenue from 120th Street. Like I said, we. We looked at ourselves as a special force. Yeah. It wasn't nothing too heavy that we couldn't well, move we out the way. Going over to the so we went over there and started moving yeah. them niggas out yeah. over there in Inglewood. Homie needed the cootie cool, you know, to do what they do with their money game. And so the Ramos from the 120th Street went over there and helped the homie out. Yeah. 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 I mean, sudden, we went over there. All of a sudden, Nugget had a bunch of band of, 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 of crips over there that was that's yeah. just as down as any crib we ever know. Yeah. You know, so some big T. They was claiming the Nugget. They was claiming the Nugget. They shot Nugget, Nugget, Nugget in the back. We went over there and pushed. Yeah, we went over there and When they pushed. shot him, we went over there and pushed. And pushed hard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying, Gabe? They yeah. shot Nugget, we went over there and pushed. That's oh, yeah, how that went spud. down, man. Yeah, that's Spud. That's you and Spud. Yeah. T.U. We got that shit. That's the number that's T.U. That's you and T. And I go. That's Spud right there, rest in peace. Yeah. That's me, Spud. That's Jay from Hoover. I uh, see. I see Spud. That's Jay. 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 from Pasadena. Yeah, you got that in your phone. I'm trying to find it. Yeah, I'm trying to I got it. Show Gacy that picture. I'm trying to find it right now. Yeah. No, Gacy, I think he got it. No, I, I think I did send it to you, man. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, dude. Yeah, I sure did. But that's how that we that said I could do go through yeah. it. Yeah, I sent it to you. Yes, sir. A lot yeah. of the due success came from us pushing over there. No, and all of the due success. <laughs> I mean, they gon' they gon' it's gon' they got their own story over there, and we, we you know, we don't yeah. that's some real good motherfuckers. Yeah. Nigga, we the 20s, nigga. We the origination of this Raymond Avenue Crippin. Raymond Avenue Crippin came about from West Avenue High School. Name in respect, in part, to Raymond Washington, nigga, it came about here. So whatever the homies got going on on the lower level about how they came about and who they are, yeah, like I said, they ain't got no. My days, I respected Big Took, Raymond Washington, yeah. Mac Thomas, nigga, I respected them to the to the utmost. But they respected me because I respected them, and they was good niggas. But these motherfuckers these days, they own like some space dope stuff. They, they, they own some me stuff. They don't they ain't own shit. no other yeah. stuff at yeah. all. Look, Insurgency. it's very few of them that's on some kind of stuff like our generation. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's very few of them. They out there, it's a few of them. But it's they few and far in between, and more than likely the blind is leaving the blind right now. You know what I'm saying? Instead of a real follow us, real shit, taking hold of their situation yeah. and putting their motherfucking foot on their neck and saying, This is how it's going to go, this is how it's supposed to go, and this is how we're going to do it. In this Come on, we got a few, though. We got a few. I yeah. feel like that. But still, water. You know. Yeah, it's just a few talking. Hey, guess, can I ask you this? Did yeah. you ever meet that little bad motherfucker man, Harold little son, baby Ace? That motherfucker there was a bad motherfucker. No, I ain't, I ain't what, that bro. That nigga got what, life like that. What, 19 years old? What, long? Big Aaron or Lil Aaron's son? Big Aaron's son. No, I ain't never, hey, I ain't never meet his son. That nigga there is a cold killer. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, his daddy was a beast too. That was sparking buff and go. Yeah. Big H. Rest in peace, yeah, big age. He used to take me, he used to take me and hair round with the brother. <laughs> what y'all was in? Calabar together? We was in YTS together. Oh, y'all on the independent together? Yeah. We Albany, New York. What's up, Albany, New York? That's right. I see y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah. What well, you was in there? Y'all was in two years together. Me, Baby uh -huh. Wayne, Mac Thomas, Movie Star. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, you were talking about time. Time. Sorry, Sorry Charles, somebody, somebody said. You don't want to. You want. You don't want to talk about no prison shit, do you? Nigga, we can talk about prison. Yeah, shit. somebody. Prison, oh, okay, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody. Yeah. When you yeah. fuck with slow drag, the homies yeah. tore it no, up. No, no, because last time we said we were going to do this first and then we do the prison shit later. Nigga, we can, okay. You got time? 
Yeah, I got time, baby. Let's roll. 35 bullets up in there. Somebody said, you know. I'm up in prison and I did on the street. He said, can you tap in with Sparks on the foundation of the Blue Notes? Yeah, can you tap in with Sparks on the foundation of the Blue Notes? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Well, that's top secret, man. Yeah, that's not top secret. That's not no That's public. That's public. And it need to be. Hey, 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 you crazy. Look. No, that's, that ain't top secret. You see that? You know what I mean? Uh, that's crib secret. You know what so I'm saying? The blue note, you know, first of all, the blue note is a harmonious note. And the blue notes came about because because the same Quentin call we thought Crips, a contra, you know, a Crips thought that the name Crip was being hijacked. So, by the CCO, by way of the BGL. So, it was Crips that wasn't feeling that. So, when I went to prison in 1980, I went to St. Quentin in 1983. And right before I went to St. Quentin in 1983, I had a conversation with Uber Joe on 4300 on the Red H module. This is Red H module predates the Crip module. Red H means hostile individual. That was us, the Crips. It was just one tier. And I was sent a point with them hostile individuals on that 4300. But Hoover Joe came through and I was on my head of murder. I was on, I was fighting the murder at this time. Hoover Joe came through and said, little homie, me and Joe know each other from YTS. He's like, I've never been to prison. I'm doing my cripping out here on these streets. I don't, then I heard about these vanguards and BGS. First thing I heard about BGS is from Raymond Washington, like little homies. And he came and I was at that crib. He's like, when y'all go to prison and the BGS niggas, he planted the seed in there. He Raymond Washington planted the seed. He's like them BGA niggas. All you, we was at a crib meeting. Raymond's telling young, you niggas that's gonna go to prison. Them BGS niggas try to make me put my blue rag down. You niggas get up in there, don't put that blue rag down. Nigga, this is Chris That was a seed. All right, I didn't know I was going to prison at that time, but I went. When I got there in '83, I seen these crips, you know, out there catering. Exercise, looking like it was organized. They were CCOs. They wasn't Joe and Pretty Tony's car. They wasn't who were Joe and Pretty Tony C Machine car. Yeah. So they had, you know, and Joe told me, you know, uh, homies that turned Vanguard's BGF. He like SK, you go to prison. Sparks, you go to prison. Fuck them niggas. This Crip Club. Go up in there, represent it. I went up in there not knowing the politics of, of the terrain. Nigga, the Crips was looking like they was organized. The homie was on death row, big to treasure he was there before I got there. They shot me because I was out there. I was about to go to Russia with the CCO, niggas, because I like what I saw. Point blank. When I got there, nigga, this is what Crippin is all about. Yeah. Nigga, these niggas are solid. This nigga, this is an organization. These Crips got it together. Nigga, I'm in there. Nigga, this is what I want to do. Let's organize. Odie. Nigga, the nigga that I tailored my Crippin off of. I used to write Crip Gang when I was like 13, 14. On the wall, Odie used to come get me, nigga, and Henry Clay. And like, nigga, I did not tell your little ass not to be writing Crip Gang, nigga, we're an organization. I'm not going to talk back to the big homie. You know what I'm saying? But I used to think in my mind, I'd be damned if I write an organization like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wasn't going to say that to the big homie. Yeah. But when I got to prison, I was like, oh, this is the shit Odie talking about. This the organization shit. These Crips look like, you know, and then these niggas got to give me books and shit about black history and revolution and Marxism. I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. Then they niggas got to teach me Swahili, you know, and Jay Moss. You know, I was like, oh, this is what. Then Big Homie Took got at me. On death row. Evil Tresh, you know, even Tresh. Then my, you know, contemporary. Yeah. They got to get at me. And it's like, SK, nigga, you know what you is in this crib, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Niggas from Y.A. to Camden, stay right on the streets. Some niggas out there know you, girl. You know that. But what they doing, cuz, ain't quick. It ain't Raymond. It ain't Raymond Washington, cuz. It ain't Odie, cuz. 
I was like, yeah, it is, nigga. I wrote them back a cake. <laughs> They're like, niggas, this is Odie, nigga. It's like, then they sent me a motherfucking constitution. They sent me the CCO constitution. And they sent, that's what turned. They sent me the CCO constitution. And they sent me the BGF constitution. And the only difference, I mean, I swear, I don't know if they was playing me, but they sent me two constitutions, though. One was the BGS and one was the CCO. So the uh, Ascari was my next door neighbor. The, the CCO yeah. never had to give me no one constant because yeah. they know I'm crippled and they know I'm with them. Nigga, the Doge Rack, nigga, Mexican Mafia, ABs, police, whatever. Nigga, Doge Rack, I'm crippled. Nigga, y'all get it down, nigga, I'm knocking everything down in my sight that ain't a crip. So look, yeah. they sent me a, a paperwork saying, one is CCO, one is BGS, I swear to you, and I don't think the homies played me like that, but I swear to you, it was a no difference in their constitution. But one said BGF and one said CCO. And that what fucked me up for life. And then after that, uh, I like got back at them, I say, cuz, I can't do it. I don't, I'm, I'm not mad at no black, I'm not mad at no revolution, overthrow the white, that's cool, but that ain't Crip. Cause Crip, we want some other shit. Y'all can overthrow the White House, y'all can do what the fuck y'all want to do with this revolution. We cool with it. But it ain't Crip, cuz, it ain't Raymond Washington, it ain't Big Took. It ain't Mac Thomas, huh? That ain't what they was about. This is what they was about building us up yeah. in our own way. But so when they hit me with that, I hit them back. I say, well, look, I'm gonna step back from this shit. I wouldn't never know CCO, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I was still because I, I looked at yeah. these niggas as crips. I like I told CCO niggas on their yard. I went into their meeting and told them. No, cuz y'all niggas ain't crappy, cuz. And it's like, what you talking about? I said, first of all, cuz, I'm gonna tell y'all fucked up with me on one thing. It was a nigga uh, from Hoover. What's this nigga name? This nigga here had a red rag. Yeah, he had a red rag. Yeah, that one nigga, but one. I went to the East Black Yard, that nigga had a red rag. He tried to teach me. He, he was in me. TS he been knowing me for years. He know how hard my cripping was. He was so TS I go to the yard. This nigga got a red rag in like sparks. It ain't about no blue rag and red rag no more. That fucked me up for yeah. that really yeah. cause nigga I nigga I rubber Raymond in this blue rag. I was yeah. like, that nigga that like like touched me. That like hit me to the heart. I was like, cuz, you cuz you niggas been here four, five years, cuz. I just left the streets, homie. It's really it's it's real deal out there. Homies is dying and killing and real about this shit. That hit me like a like that almost made me I started to knock the nigga out. The nigga's like, it ain't, it ain't even no blue rag. I like cuz now, cuz I'm, I'm with this organization, cuz, but it's got to be a blue rag, cuz. Yeah. It's got to be. Y'all niggas is fucking up up in here. Cuz I was in, I was in, where them niggas was there, I was on the street. I was like, y'all niggas going to get smacked. Y'all don't know what kind of crip wave is coming at y'all. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I was just, y'all been here five or six years. Y'all ain't knowing what them crips is doing in L.A. Yeah, motherfuckers coming up in here. Y'all niggas is about to come in here and kill y'all niggas off with that bullshit. If you tell them niggas when they come off that bus that that blue rag don't mean nothing like you telling me. Dumb niggas is going to fight to the death out here on this yard, homie. Especially the Compton niggas and the East Coast niggas. You know, Suma, you know, uh, you know all y'all. But when them niggas, yeah. them niggas gonna wake up, them niggas gonna, if it ain't cripping with them niggas, and they don't, if they feel like it's anything other than that, y'all in trouble, cuz. Y'all niggas gonna get out of prison, them niggas gonna knock y'all down. I'm telling you what they gonna do. They gonna knock y'all down because they believe in this cripping. They believe in taking this cripping. Cripping, not no BGF, not no revolution. They believe in taking, if the Crips go to revolution, then that's a different thing. But that's gonna be on the streets, girl. That ain't gonna be in the streets. That's gonna be on the streets, girl. Crips is on the streets. If they believe that they want to go revolution on the street, so be it. But the Crips is about their money, 
You know what I'm saying? They about handling the alcohol, they bitches. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and Crips is about seeing anybody that want to see them, nigga. Period. We love slow nigga, you respect Crip. You respect Crip. You respect these niggas. They respect you. Alexander. All the Crips respect they hood. We love slow respect they own. Respect they yeah, little black yeah. slow yeah. But the minute you disrespect them, yeah. nigga, you got a problem. So that's just, that's just giving, nigga. I'm just, I'm preaching to the choir. Yeah. And what the blue note came about because CCO wasn't represent the blue rag. And so blue note, so the Ramos couldn't deal with the CCO. Tretch and Evo on death row, Big Took, even with all his, you know, muscles and reputation on the west side. The CCOs didn't give a fuck about Big Took, first of all. You trust me. They told me straight up, that's another thing. Forget about Big Took on death row. I'm like, nigga, I ain't gonna never do that. Nigga, I ain't gonna never forget about Max Thomas. I ain't gonna never forget about Raymond Washington, nigga. And I'm certainly not gonna forget about Big Took, nigga, that's still here. CC, I swear, good. On every blue rag, nigga, that ever laid on any coffin anywhere, nigga, I put my hand on it. Them niggas told me, a scar from 60, told me to forget about Took. I was like, no, nigga, I, I can't do that, girl. And if nigga, you come out to sell, nigga, you need, I got your hat. He never came out to sell because I would have stumped him out. But he was my name. He's like, as far as the only, forget, I like, cuz, I can't do that. So when you come out to sell, cuz, you got one coming, homie. Next thing I know, a kite was dropped on me and they rolled me up. But that's how the, the blue notes came about. Because the Raymond and Took couldn't deal with this CCO shit. They could not. It's, and the CCOs uh, consolidated that blue magic car. And another motherfucker that, that educated me on, on, on these prison politics was Frog, who was a general in that blue magic. So Frog was another motherfucker that got at me. You know, he took gangster they tried against the frog. Yeah. You know, they, yeah, and I used to call him Brute. That was BJ, man. But yeah, he, he was a general in the Blue Magic, in the Blue Magic Corps. He hated the consolidation from the heart. So it wasn't just took, and he wasn't treading on them getting at me, but it was also Frog, who was a Blue Magic. So the, consol the consolidation is the C Corps, which is Hoover Joe and Pretty Tony's car at San Quentin. And the Blue Magic Corps. Now we come to find out that Kenny Carter, who run the BGF at the time, had some paperwork or some smut or something on James Miller, who ran the Blue Magic Corps. And so they was able to to, to manipulate us and to consolidate with them. It was all a game, cause to get this cripping inside, cause Kenny. Used to run with these crips out here, you know what I mean? But he became the leader of the BGS. So it was some ugly shit going on. Yeah. And we was able to weed through that shit. Mm -hmm. But by the time we was able to weed through that shit, the Comptons, the, 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 the everybody but East Coast is on me, the, the 60s, the Hoovers, all the big crip gang on me was in there. And all they needed was this little itty bitty. You know, specialized hit crew, these West Side Raymond niggas, to get in there. Yeah. And they was trying to get me in there through me. They was trying to get these Raymond niggas in that mix. And took and all them at the fro. And that's how Blue Note came about, nigga. You looking at a motherfucker who's proud. Now, I ain't going to say nothing Pacific about who was. No, yeah. But yes, nigga, I was a Blue Note Crip, nigga. And the reason I was a Blue Note Crip, nigga, because I wanted to keep my... Wherever I went, whether I went to the BGF yard, nigga, the Vanguard yard, nigga, the Crip yard, nigga, the main yard, nigga. I wasn't going to put this blue rag up, cuz. And but... By myself, nigga, I had 19-inch arms. Nigga, I was benching nine, eight quarters. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, I knew everything about knives. Nigga, I'm a killer. No doubt about it. But by myself, I can't win, even with my homies. If I had all you niggas here with me, you niggas could stand a chance against them CCO. So we got to devise, how do we do this? Crips is not dumb, cuz first of all, let's get that out of the way. Nigga, Crips think, nigga. 
Real Crips, nigga, go deep into that brain pool, nigga, into that ancestry mm -hmm. wisdom, nigga. Now, I'm telling you, that we had to come up with something where we can get more down Crips that seen it, that can sniff this shit out. And we came up with the blue note. We came up with the harmony. You know what I'm saying? The blue note is the harmonious structure against something mm -hmm. to preserve yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To preserve yourself. And this is what we did, cuz, as Blue Note, we went out there and warred, ugly as it is, brother on brother. Yeah, nigga, we went out there and warred, nigga. We went out there and stepped to this shit, like, nigga, nah. We ain't gonna wear no red rags, nigga. And we went out there, nigga, yep, Mexican Mafia, hit slow drag. It, nigga, it was the Blue Note, nigga, that stepped to that. This nigga say, OG, OG Spark, I'm 30 years old and I want to be a crip. Can you let me, <laughs> can you Tell let me, me in? Old. You're too old. You're too old, homie. Too old. It's too late. No, 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 no. no. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. I was at a crip meeting in YTS. No, hold up. Hold up, cuz. I was at a crip meeting in YTS. Guess what it is. Now, I'm going to tell y'all some good shit. I was at a crip meeting in YTS. Who would Joe? Who would Joe, nigga? Joe Stanley, nigga, we was in the script meeting, and Mac Thomas was there. So Mac Thomas was the mate. Nigga, this is on YTS yard. It was a bunch of crips there, nigga. Who would Joe step in? Who would Joe didn't like no Pomonas? He didn't like no West, he didn't like no San Diego niggas. Who would Joe step in the middle of that meeting and say, nigga, if you ain't no crip before 1976, nigga, you ain't no crip. Ain't no more crips, nigga. You know, you know that's nails that, calling motherfuckers bicentennials. But, <laughs> but, 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 he got shot down yeah. by a high power, cuz. That nigga wow. Mac Thomas told that nigga step back. Mac Thomas stepped in that meeting and said, Cuz, understand what you saying, cuz. Crips don't die. They multiply home for And we don't judge Crips by when they started Crip. We judge Crips by how blue they party. That's Mac Thomas. Mac Thomas said, we don't judge Crips by when they start Crip. We judge Crips, cuz, by how blue they heart is, cuz. So step back, cuz. Crips don't die, homie. They multiply. That's that's the shit I learned, the wisdom I learned from niggas that had this cripping in their heart. And Mac Thomas, believe me, Mac Thomas was a higher power. As high as the powers who would Joe was, Mac Thomas supersede him by leaps and bounds at this YTS yard home. So it ain't it ain't when you started cripping. It's how blew your heart is. And what you can do to take Crip from where they is now to where they should be, nigga. So, nigga, if you 50 years old and you know something about Shibu and Nu that's going to get us money and you want to be that with us and you true to it and you can stand the side of blood, <laughs> Even at an old age, yeah, yeah. then, nigga, you might be able to be a crip, nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what we do. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. This is what we do. Hey, man, check this out. Over oh, here kicking it with the RAC, my Raymond family. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have a hell of a motherfucking interview, man. Like I say, we're going to do a follow up. You know what I'm saying? With the youngsters to feel what to see where they hard at, to see how they see this cripping, to see how they see where this cripping is going. You know what I'm saying? And we're gonna get back with y'all in a minute. You know what I'm saying? It's your boy G. I'm up out of this bitch. And like I tell y'all every every week, when you know better, you gotta do better. One love, baby. I'm up out of here. Are you gonna be ready for your plates? That's the problem.